Good morning, everyone. Nice to meet you all. We are live from Belgium, Holland, and Germany. Welcome to the uh, webinar organized by Crodion in collaboration with Trübner, Estide, and Ecomatic. Um, seems like we have quite a lot of attendees, 34 people already present and more coming in, but uh, we can start, I think. So uh, good morning, everyone. I have, um, I'm, I'm Jonathan, co-founder at uh, Crodeon, um, and I invited three guest speakers this morning, John, Michael, and Chris. We will give each of them six or seven minutes um, and I'm going to invite you all. This is what we're going to talk about today. We start with about Crodeon, then the technology that we built and the kinds of projects that we have delivered. Then I will give the word to Chris from Trübner, then John from Estede, and then Michael from Ecomatic. Um, and at the end, we have 15 minutes of Q&A. And why I invite you all to ask your questions in the questions tab at the bottom right of the screen. Um, so don't hesitate to ask questions. We have 15 minutes for this. Time is money, so I um, we will respect the 45 minutes that we estimated. Let's go. I want you to remember one thing about Crodeon today, and that's keep it simple. Um, especially in the sensor world, there's so much complexity that we can encounter. Um, there's really a need for simplicity if we want to make everything easy to use and durable and long term. So about Crodeon, we are an electronics manufacturer based in Ghent, founded in 2015. We are an official Proximus partner, which is our uh, cell cellular operator in Belgium with the roaming agreements throughout Europe and beyond. And we focus on uh, plug and play end to end monitoring systems. John, I'm going to mute you for now. I wish you the best. <laughs> um, so we focus on plug and play end to end uh, monitoring systems. You will see what, uh, what that means in just a few seconds. Uh, we are active in multiple markets. We are in construction, agriculture, livestock and food and actually many more. Uh, instead of limiting ourselves to certain markets, I, I rather talk about the verticals named weather, water, and indoor climate. That's what Crodeon is active in, and um, that's where we find our technology is of the most use. So whatever project you have in these categories, our technology will be able to help you. What is this technology? Everything that we do at Crodeon starts with Reporter. I'm going to show it on the webcam as well. This is the device. Reporter is a wireless sensor module. It's got four sensor connectors and the fifth one is for power. It's a plug and play sensor device. It's powered by grid power or solar power. And there's a wireless cellular connection, 4G narrowband, 4G cut M and 2G on board. There's also an alarm feature. So you can get alarm measurements if a certain sensor is uh, measuring above or below a certain threshold. <coughs> So Reporter is our own device. We've built it from scratch and we've rethought from the bottom what the perfect sensor device should look like. Um, the perfect sensor device in our eyes works with as many sensors as possible. It should work with the best sensor from the best third party manufacturer. So you can connect up to four sensors to your reporter and you have the freedom to combine any sensor from our shop. If you go to crodeon.com slash collections, you will see uh, a lineup of today, I think, 24 sensors, which is growing rapidly. Some of these sensors are from Ecomatic, uh, Estede and Trübner, more of which you will hear soon. Limitations, maximum four sensors per report, maximum 30 meters cable per sensor. Of course, we don't just ship hardware. No, we have an end-to-end -end solution. That means we also provide the cloud part. There's the Crodeon dashboard, so you can view your data in a simple way online. It's a browser-based application, and you can try it out yourself at cloud.crodeon.com. 
is also an Excel export. And more importantly, there's an API. So if you want to integrate with your own data platform, like the tool that John will demonstrate, um, then you can use our API. And by the way, the dashboard is also mobile already, so you can view it on your smartphone. Installing your reporter is easy as pie. It's a waterproof device, so you can install it outdoor and indoor. Um, it's ridiculously easy. You just connect the sensor and it works out of the box. The connectors on the reporter, I'm going to show it here again on the webcam. These are M12 connectors and they are wireless. Uh, they are waterproof as well. There's a lot of pictures on the website, so have a look. Um, Every sensor fits every port and that allows you to connect, to combine any sensor that you like. You can combine four analog sensors from Ecomatic, for example, or two digital sensors with dry contacts and a weather sensor. And there's no limit to that. Many of our reporters as you are used as <coughs> are used as weather stations. That means they are equipped with a solar panel for the power source and a weather sensor for uh, weather registration, uh, which measures temperature, humidity, rain, wind, and pressure. And you can expand it with other sensors, for example, PAR sensors uh, for light, leaf wetness, dendrometers, and so on. One of the uh, verticals that we are strong in is frost detection in fruit orchards in spring. Um, it's tricky to measure frost in spring because you want real-time data every minute and not every 15 minutes. Uh, it needs to be solar powered and autonomous. And of course, you'd like to measure at multiple heights. So this is one of the perfect um, projects that we are suited for. Pump monitoring is another one that we are good at measuring flow, vacuum pressure and groundwater level or fuel. Um, so it's just another combination of sensors with the same reporter. Um, a story that Michael will be able to tell more about is measuring stem diameters in combination with soil tension uh, to find out how much water a plant exactly needs. But because Michael will uh, tell us about this, I'm going to skip this slide for now. Connecting legacy flow meters is something that we like to do using our flow, our, our input adapter. So the input adapter has a pulse counter built in, and this allows us to uh, make your old flow meter digitally compatible with the reporter. Some of the projects that we have worked on, because my time is already running out. Uh, for Mürtein, which is a vertical green manufacturer, we have uh, proven the isolating effect of the green walls. And we also measure um, soil humidity. Bax is a dewatering company. Of course, we help them with uh, groundwater level, vacuum pressure, power outage detection and flow measuring. PC Fruit is a good is a company in Belgium uh, focused on fruit research. Uh, they use reporters from many different projects around weather monitoring, uh, soil tension with the famous watermark sensor, uh, leaf wetness and dendrometers uh, and so on. We've been helping them for quite a few years now. The Latam Golf Club uh, was uh, forced to prove to the government that they did not have a long lasting effect on the groundwater levels because they consume a lot of water. But they were able to demonstrate with data that as soon as the pumps stop, the groundwater level restores. That's what you see on the graph here on the right. And this way they are allowed to keep pumping water in the summer. So this is actually proving with data that you're not doing harm to the environment. Then here's a customer I cannot disclose the name of, and we help them with monitoring uh, the health of trees using soil moisture sensors, soil tension and groundwater level, because during dewatering, a tree can suffer. Inagro is uh, similar to PC Freud, but focused on agriculture instead of fruit. We help them with potato storage monitoring, CO2, temperature, humidity. And then we have Aquafin where we helped uh, the water company to proactively empty a pump, uh, empty a water well the day before a rain uh, was announced. There's also an API integration with Azure in this project. There we go. Maybe that was a bit fast, but uh, I really like to keep the time short. So we're going to jump to Chris from Trübner right away. 
uh, Chris. Thank you very much. Here we go, Jonathan. So I'm going to continue. I will talk a little bit about soil moisture sensing. We are a manufacturer of soil moisture sensors, and uh, I will talk about uh, a few soil moisture measurement principles we are using. We are mainly focused on electromagnetic wave interaction with um, moist substances. So we are measuring the dielectric properties of um, moist materials, which is a maintenance-free and very robust method. Um, the basic physical principle uh, relies on the special properties of water. Water has a permittivity or dielectric constant of 80, whereas air has one and mineral particles between three and eight, and soil is considered to be a mixture of water, minerals, and air, and therefore the uh, total permittivity of uh, the media is mainly dependent on the water content. Um, why is water such a, has such a special characteristic? Because it's a dipole, and if you want to design a soil moisture sensor, then you have to think about the interaction with the electromagnetic field. The most important question is about the frequency you're using for your measurement. And the key to really good moisture measurement is using a high measurement frequency, which is typically between about 100 megahertz and 1 gigahertz. Um, sensors working at lower frequencies have much more problems with disturbing influence of salt content and other materials within the soil. Um, the relation between the physical measured uh, property permittivity and the water uh, content, unfortunately, is uh, affected by a couple of disturbing factors like soil density, soil type, conductivity, bound water, so that's water which is attached to the mineral particles, grain geometry, temperature, and so on. Uh, so, um, if you look at this relation, uh, then you have to be a bit careful and uh, only by choosing right frequencies and the proper design of the sensors, you can get more or less rid of these disturbing influences. Um, we do have a laboratory for measuring dielectric properties of materials, uh, which requires a lot of high frequency measurement instruments. And uh, based on the uh, measurements of materials and electronic design, we develop sensors. These sensors work both in either in frequency domain or time domain. A uh, very prominent example is our SMT100, which is a point sensor which measures dielectric permittivity, has an onboard microcontroller, calculates volumetric water content, and is available with a couple of various options for interfacing to uh, data loggers and, of course, to the reporter of Grodeon. Uh, this sensor is, has a very robust design. It is uh, completely sealed with epoxy, so it can be used very long in, in the soil for, for many years or tens of years in the soil without any damage. And when we started in 2012, we still have customers using these sensors from uh, uh, this uh, start of our company. Uh, some examples, we are active in agricultural research. For example, this is the Future Farm in Western Australia. They are trying no tillage practices for agricultural uh, uses. We do have uh, lots of sensors in greenhouse irrigation control. We uh, have uh, large projects like this carrot farm. This is the largest independent carrot producer in France, 1,500 hectares carrot. And they are uh, using our sensors for monitoring infiltration of water. The most important thing is to produce carrots with a certain length. And so the carrots grow where the water is. And so if you control the water infiltration, then you can control the length of the carrots. Nowadays, these are complete automated systems with wireless control and so on, uh, on 1,500 hectares. Uh, some other applications are, for example, green walls. This is the largest green building in Europe 
Kölbogen in Düsseldorf, uh, completely based uh, on moisture measurements with our SMT 100. Uh, or, for example, in indoor gardening, uh, this uh, nice location with 400 precious palms is also monitored with SMT 100 and the irrigation is controlled. And we do produce also as an OEM manufacturer for the building uh, automation area and uh, not only point sensors, but also sensors with a larger volume. This is our Aquaflex sensor, which is usually used, for example, on sports grounds, vineyards, and so on. If you want to know more about uh, soil moisture measurement pr principles, just go on our website, call us, or we do have a, a scientific book which goes really deep into the details of uh, moisture measurement, and it's it's free for downloading. So this was the short overview, and I pass the microphone to the next speaker then. Yes, let's go to John. John, you have to unmute. And by the way, uh, listeners, please ask your questions uh, in the questions tab or in the chat, um, and we will handle all of them afterwards. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I'm loud and clear, okay. I'm going to share our portal. Um, we at uh, STD um, uh, have our own uh, uh, portal for stations uh, uh, to send uh, their data to. Um, in this case, um, we have a Crodion reporter uh, with uh, two uh, sensors, air temperature and air humidity. And I will show you um, uh, how easy it is to uh, connect the reporter using the API of Crodion um, to your own uh, web portal. Um, Jonathan has already shown uh, that uh, the dashboard of uh, Crodion the, the, themselves. But I will show you the, the, how easy it is to, uh, to use your own uh, uh, dashboard if you have one. So uh, this is our dashboard uh, for the station. And you can see the current conditions of this station located at our office in the south position. Um, it has air temperature and humidity. And with these two sensors, you can also uh, determine the wet bulb temperature and the dew point. And these uh, parameters are uh, uh, very important if you are in the uh, in, into fruit growing. So I will uh, get into uh, more detail uh, when it comes to fruit growing using these uh, sensors and the and this portal we have. Um, the sensors uh, show the data also on grass. You can see here the air temperature of the last seven days. If I scroll down, this is the air humidity. And then the calculated wet bulb temperature and the dew point. Um, the colors you see is uh, something I put in myself. You can do that by yourself. You can choose your own thresholds, your own temperature levels or uh, 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 sensing levels. Um, so you can make it more clear for uh, further analysis. Um, this is the daily of the weekly mode, but we also have a monthly mode. And then it will show you the values of the last month, air temperature, air humidity, wet bulb, and dew point as well. I have um, not filled in the colors here, so you can see that it's, it's your own choice if you can, if you want to uh, use thresholds or not. And talking about thresholds, um, the, uh, not only using the grass for uh, early uh, warning, for frost alerts, for instance, for fruit growing. You can use also the grass and also the, the values as thresholds. For instance, if you uh, choose uh, two degrees uh, Celsius as a threshold for uh, alarming uh, and uh, starting your irrigation or your uh, uh, fire pots uh, uh, when it comes to night frost, then you can also uh, set in the, the, the threshold as well. 
but you can also use the colors for your own uh, analysis. And when it comes to uh, this red bulb, I want to show you um, a few a few days what you, what you can do with the for instance if you you see here the temperature are we're dipping down and if you go further into detail then you see what has happened in that time but if you go to uh, for a, a certain period for instance between 18 sorry 18 and 20 january you do that also for air humidity and you can see the what what the the grass will look like here you see that uh, it's above um, freezing temperatures but if you go down because the air humidity is lower than 100 percent the wet bulb is already in the freezing temperatures so this 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 gives you an idea and more analysis uh, purposes for uh, being in time to set off your uh, night frost uh, alerts. Um, what I also want to show you is um, if you want to uh, get the graphs in one or get the values in one graph, then I will show you that is also possible. And you can see what is what that is doing. I will choose our temperature and wet bulb in this case then this will it shows you this graph green is the wet bulb and blue is the air temperature if you go if i go to a certain date where it's what was freezing here it dips below the the freezing temperatures here the both both values are are uh, almost identical but here you have a discrepancy and how does that come well you know that air humidity is the cause and if you put air humidity as well in the graph then you see that was that was the larger discrepancies between the the values that here the air humidity was dipping so um, that is a short demonstration of uh, our portal using the the Crodium Crodium uh, reporter with uh, two important sensors for uh, for fruit growers. That will uh, conclude my uh, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. We can. Oh, we forgot to show your logo there we go okay. then we go to uh michael final speaker <clears throat> from ecomatic you still have to oh yes you're unmuted go ahead michael yeah <clears throat> hi good morning everybody so um what ecomatic does is plant sensors so we have now talked about sensing around the plant with soil moisture climate sensors and whatever and Ecomatic is very much focused on sensing directly at the plant. And uh, what we uh, deliver is low power sensors of the, how we call it, IOP, because as we are plant physiologists, we believe that plants are no things. But um, yeah, I could tell you something about the cool uh, LAT B3, which is measuring directly leaf temperature and surrounding air temperature. And you can also um, uh, measure frost events very precisely. Um, I could also tell you about a low power heat pulse set flow sensor, uh, which is measuring actually the water speed um, or the water going through the stem of a plant. But as we only have uh, quite um, some minutes of time, I will focus on a very um, well, a principal product range of, of ecomatic, which is dendrometers. 
And here you can see just a selection of our wide range of dendrometers we offer. And from that, you can see, uh, well, almost every application um, requires a certain model to deliver optimum results. And uh, the cool with dendrometry is that you can not only use it to measure um, continuously the growth of your plant, but also you can measure the water status of the plant directly at the plant. And therefore I show you here some uh, data, measurement data. This is uh, if you look at dendrometer curve from above, from a bird's eye perspective. So here you can see several years of growth. This is every step you see in the red curve is one year of growth of a tree. If you now zoom in, in such a growth uh, vegetation period, you can see that at a micrometer scale, we have up and downs, which is a diagonal deviation of the diameter signal. And in this micrometer scale, we can see the response of the plant to um, water availability. And here we can see, this is uh, what Jonathan also showed uh, just uh, a glance. This is, uh, um, gives you an understanding how this comes, yeah, because the, the plant is actually interconnected between the water source, which is um, um, usually the soil, and the atmosphere, which is the demand part. And the, the, uh, the plant is not only conducting the water, but it's also storing water. It's acting like a buffer. So the whole cells, the whole body of the plant is a buffer uh, for the demand from the atmosphere. And now when the buffer is depleted, because I cannot take up as much water as I require, if I would be the plant, I would need to shrink, okay? Because water is depleted. And then I can refill if there is water in the soil. And this is what all this up and down, the diagonal up and down is about. So now you can see here in the curve when it's going down, um, this means that the water status of the plant is becoming worse and worse if the soil dries out. And um, in a work from Seifelit al 2016, um, they um, explain or they um, establish a method how we can now from this up and down, from the micrometer scale information in a dendrometer curve, uh, deduce a tree water deficit, or it can also be a plant water deficit because for herbaceous plants, it would work similar. Yeah, so you have a drought stress index that is directly measured at the plant itself. And here is just a short a data um, a example of a lemon tree that was desiccated in the above graph, you can see the soil moisture content going down at a certain date when they cut off the irrigation. And below the below graph is the tree water deficit calculated based on a dendrometer curve. And you can clearly see, okay, this tree suffers uh, what a lack of water. And uh, the good thing is with a dendrometer, you don't need to know where it gets its water from. So you don't need many sensors and to do an average of your soil moisture availability, but you just measure with one dendrometer at the stem and it's not importing you where it gets its water from deeper layers or from shallow layers or from a crack or don't know. So the take home message of this first part is um, dendrometers precisely and continuously measure growth and increment, but the real magic lies in the dendrometer's capability to continuously and directly measure plant water status. And uh, just a quick thing, and you can browse through these uh, slides after you will get this presentation also. Um, Ecomatic is around for more than 30 years now. And for more than 25 years, we are producing dendrometers. And there are many lessons we learned on the, this way. Um, so one very important thing is be aware of dendrometer shaped or dendrometer looking temperature sensors. They may be hard to distinguish from real dendrometers. Yeah, that's funny, right? But if you want to measure on a micrometer scale, you need to be sure that your dendrometer is not just affected by temperature. And this is what we do in our design. 
And the next thing is we are measuring on a micrometer scale and we really mean it if you do not measure, if your um, dendrometer is not able to measure on a micrometer scale, you will not be able to see the diagonal up and down, the shrinkage and swelling, which is giving you information uh, on the water status. So here in this graph, we compare our dendrometer, the DR1 with another brand, which is actually advertising a resolution of lower than one micron, which is already suspicious, okay? So please keep in mind, dendrometers are mechatronic precision devices. And if you are not able to measure on a micrometer scale, then you will not get the, the correct timing of the onset of growth. You will not get the right increment, but you will also not get, not get the diagonal variation and will not be able to capture or deduce water status from that. Yeah, just another. And also, of course, this is the logging device. The logging device to which our dendrometers are connected to, like the reporter, is capable to measure at a very high resolution. Yeah, to have the ability to measure on the micrometer scale. And in the long run, and to our experience, you need continuous data. So this means minimum maintenance requirements of our dendrometers at maximum robustness. And one important thing is, I told already in the beginning, um, the best results you get if you have a specialized dendrometer for your application. So the take home message is dendrometers need to be robust and ultra precise. It is easier to build a bad temperature sensor than a real dendrometer, yeah? A dendrometer is only as precise as the measurement equipment it is connected to. And in some dendrometer applications, the success lies in a specially adapted sensor design. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Some questions have already appeared in the chat. Maybe you can uh, have a look and then we handle them in a few minutes. Um, by the way, uh, reading dendrometers uh, is not an easy thing indeed. At Clodion, we try to do this with a 24-bit accuracy for maximal um, uh, results. So let me repeat the message from the beginning again. Keep it simple. Uh, at Crodion, we've reinvented what the perfect sensor solution should look like. Um, the perfect sensor device needs to be compatible with the best sensor for the right project. That's what we've been doing. And more and more, this is becoming an ecosystem of sensor manufacturers that we like to work with. Um, and we like to work with the right manufacturer for the right project. Um, I think the speakers of today have illustrated this on a sensor level and what John illustrated is part of our cloud ecosystem. It's companies that build software on top of our Crodion API. And that's how we can really keep the troubles and uh, worries away from software companies so they can focus on building great software. Some more customers that we have worked with in the past and there's some more on our website. Don't hesitate to contact me and the speakers, of course, as well. Everyone will get a form at the end where you will again see the contact details of the speakers. And we invite you all to uh, leave your feedback about this webinar. I suggest we now go to the uh, Q&A part. Uh, I will moderate the questions and let's start at the bottom. Um, do you have projects on fruit storage at PC Fruit. Uh, I don't think we've worked well on fruit storage uh, at PC Fruit. Maybe if someone from PC Fruit is in the audience, you can uh, write a message in the chat for Peter Balk, but I don't think uh, Krodion has worked on um, storage. Um, Jonas asked if we if we can uh, share the slides. Of course, we will share the slides afterwards, Jonas. Uh, Pauline de Klerk, how many SMT100 sensors do you use on a carrot field? Chris, you have to check with your colleagues. Anything to add? Um... Uh, probably yes. Um, <clears throat> it really depends on the application and on the inhomogeneity of the area. Um, 
there is a good video. I, I will find a video and I can share that video link, which explains the statistics of uh, the natural inhomogeneity of soils. And you can easily get 5 to 10% inhomogeneity variations of soil moisture. So you need a certain number of sensors on your field, not just one or two or three sensors, usually more. But uh, it's often a question of the budget. Okay, wonderful. Then um, Anisieto asks, have you ever had experience using your system to monitor the hydraulic performance of rain gardens in sustainable drainage system projects? Um, Chris, that was also a question for you, I suppose. Yes, you can see my answer. Right. Okay. Okay, I There's think nothing that's... To add, no problem. Yeah, nothing to add, yeah. Gabriel van den Broek, can you derive the carbon uptake of a tree using dendrometry values? Michael, that's one for you, I think. You have to unmute, Michael. We can't hear you. Michael, can you unmute? Ah, sorry. Yeah, could you please repeat the question? Can you derive the carbon uptake of a tree using dendrometry values? Um, okay, yeah, of course, you would need to have an allometric uh, model of your plant. So um, if, you, if you can correlate the overall biomass um, increment uh, down to the stem diameter increment, then you should be able to calculate uh, the carbon gain. And this is actually done by some scientists using our dendrometers um, along with our dendrometer signal giving them growth. They also uh, measure water uptake or sap flow with another sensor. And combining these two um, parameters, their models are able to calculate carbon uptake from that, right? Okay, next question from Pauline. Is the output of the dendrometer in voltage or is there an automatic calculation to micrometers? Indeed, um, reporter converts this to uh, micrometers. And maybe I will take this chance to introduce our sensor adapter. This is the um, small piece where we convert the dendrometer signal. By the way, the adapter is how we can uh, magically connect any sensor to the same kind of ports. Uh, on the reporter. So the reporter has four universal ports and depending on the sensor, we use the right adapter. Then we go to the question of Renik, do you have leaf wetness sensors or can leaf wetness be derived from your leaf temperature sensor? Um, I posted a link to a leaf wetness sensor that we have on our web shop, Renik, but I think Michael, um, that he's also referring to your leaf temperature sensor. Can you uh, derive leaf wetness from the leaf temperature? Um, well, uh, leaf wetness, not, but you can um, derive uh, the fact if there is condensation on the leaf. This is quite a very interesting application for our leaf temperature sensor because if you know the surrounding air temperature and surrounding air humidity, you can calculate if their uh, dew point is reached at the leaf surface uh, because, uh, well, this is often quite difficult to measure and a leaf wetness sensor may not have the same uh, physical and thermal properties as the leaf. So if a, a leaf wetness sensor becomes wet, this does not necessarily mean that there's also condensation on a real leaf. Okay, next question is from Matthias uh, to Michael, but you replied already. What interface types are your dendrometers compatible with? Yeah, so um, maybe just a short, a short uh, comment on that uh, additionally. So 12 bits, what I said, we have, uh, uh, we have analog is the standard version. So it can be connected also to other equipment, not only the reporter or our logging options, but also others, but um, to have good readings, yeah, you will need more than 12 bits. And there are some other things which Crodium, for example, um, has already integrated and making sure that you have good measurements. Um, but in principle, it can also be connected to other loggers. Um, but 
some things need to be considered and feel free to get back to Jonathan or to me if you have more deeper questions in this topic. Great, thank you, Michael. And then yeah. Rinik asks, I'm looking for a leaf wetness sensor that measures on the actual leaves and doesn't mimic a leaf to the, do the measurements. Um, well, yeah. Rinik, I shared our uh, leaf wetness sensor on the chat. I think that's covered then. Uh, Peter Balk, does Ecomatic have experience in monitoring fruit? apple pear moisture status during long-term storage? Um, our sensors can be used and they are be used um, for monitoring shrinkage of fruits uh, in storage. So um, if, whenever we have a dimension change of something which lies in the micrometer scale, our dendrometers are able to measure that. Um, and if this is in the time of storage, then it can also be measured with our dendrometers, correct? Okay, that was the final question. Any other questions? Now is the time. I noticed that we have three minutes in the time slots, so that's great. Uh, everyone uh, has um, kept this promise not to talk too long. Wonderful. Please, uh, everyone, don't hesitate to contact us, of course, if you have any additional questions afterwards. Uh, and I think each of the speakers is open to having a video call, uh, a one-on-one -on -one call, if there's uh, any more questions. The recording will be shared with you automatically. Um, so then, no more questions. And I uh, would like to take the time to thank every speaker for showing up and uh, for your interesting comments. Thank you, Michael, John, and Chris. And uh, thank you everyone for joining the webinar. Let's hope we meet again. And of course, welcome to join any other Crodeon webinar in the future. See you everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.